Once again, guys, we are here at the Dolphin Restaurant, One Van Dak Street in Yonkers. Great place. They always host our events, our shows. So, gotta come down here, have a beer, have a good meal, relax. Summertime, this is awesome to me. But we have somebody very special today. Brooker Jeans. How you doing? It's a Brooker, to meet you. thank you for being here, for sitting with us. Absolutely. Today we have a very important subject. Actually, it's something that we've been working on for the last month or so. We had interviewed a couple people uh, on this subject. This is a serious subject. Social justice, social injustice, it's very important. Of course. But before we start on the subject, tell our, tell our audience who are you and what makes you be an expert. On this. I know you are a writer, yes. so you must know more about this than people in general. Right. Tell us a little bit about you. Okay, um, Booker G's. I'm the author of the book Locked Up and Put Away. Uh, it's about my experience working as a juvenile counselor with the New York City Department of Juvenile Justice. Back in 2005, um, I started working there as a juvenile counselor, and basically it started off as a situation where I was dealing with parental responsibilities as a father. I had to make a decision to be more responsible as a father, and then I applied to become a juvenile counselor. And through that experience, I see, or I was able to see, actually how a lot of the black and Latino men are treated under this setting. And I felt like I would be more of an asset to leave an environment and to write the book. And now I developed a platform to speak about this issue. Tell me about this platform. Well, basically, um, through my experience working in that facility, I've seen how the administration neglects the residents or the young people that are under that setting. And as opposed to rehabilitating them, preparing them for life, it's almost like a revolving door. And these young men are put in situations where they're constantly defending themselves inside the facility and in the way the criminal justice system is set up in New York City, they don't really get an opportunity to change their lives because they're constantly being remanded or sent back into prison. And it's almost like a form of mass incarceration at the very young level to start them off like just before they reach high school to get them into a criminal background. And instead of developing students in school, we're developing prisoners and criminals. And it's almost like the jail or the, uh, the school to prison pipeline in New York City is never ending. So by writing the book, I put myself in a position to speak about these issues, and um, I recently was put on the Manhattan Borough President's Board to reform Rikers Island, and that gives me an opportunity to speak about what I see is wrong with the system, to prepare them to do that change, because within 10 years they plan on closing it. Yeah, well, before we go too far into the subject, because we're gonna go get you know, to all those things, mm -hmm. you spoke about the revolving door. Right. Jail systems, correction departments, is to rehabilitate people. Now, I don't see much rehabilitation in most cases. There might be one or two that, you know, but that's the exception, not the rule. You think this revolving door happens by accident or by design? It's by design. What do you mean? Well, basically, this is an industry, and these kids are the product. They, they basically fill these beds to keep these kids locked up and it's paying for people in these high positions to continue to work and live the lifestyle that they live. And instead of inside the, inside the, inside the, the structure of the facility, instead of preparing them for the next step in, in, in life, as far as like becoming citizens that contribute to positive things in society, these kids are constantly um, involved in gang activity within the facility, they're constantly involved in criminal acts inside the facility, whether it's like transporting drugs or medication between each other, or it could be coming in from the outside through visitation, and they never at any point really prepare these kids for real life, and these kids end up graduating and going to Rikers, which is something they look forward to. Rikers and all of the jail system run the country, because this is not something that it's specific to our area. Absolutely. It's everywhere. Everywhere. It's everywhere. So, what I'm getting from you is that uh, those kids that we criticize, because they become repetitive offenders, right. it's actually a monster created 
white system goes. Well, that's how they justify the existence. Mm -hmm. They get grants, they get money, they, you know, it's the whole industry, it's contract, right. it's a privatization of gel system. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more complex mm -hmm. than meets the eye. Absolutely. But you also said, said something very important in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Parents. Absolutely. How you connect, do you think that maybe a lot of the stuff that we see out there has something to do with lack of parents or responsible parents? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, what gravitated me to be in this environment and work with these kids was because I grew up without a father. Unfortunately, my father was taken away from my life because of an automobile accident through a drunk driver at the age of four. So I can understand, you know, most of these kids are being raised in single family households. So they don't have a male role model. And I felt like being in this environment, I can relate closely with them. And, I, and, and being a parent myself, you know, because I have four children. So, you know, my oldest one is in college, my youngest one is not in elementary school. So I understand the complexities of being a parent and what that involves and what that entails. And a lot of these kids from early on, they're heavily neglected by a lack of parenting. And um, they, they're, they're being exposed to traumatic experiences that are affecting their behavior, affecting um, their mental health, and a lot of them are on medication. Some of them in these environments are over-medicated, and um, these children are heavily neglected, and it's leading them into bad, making bad decisions, and eventually they get locked up. And uh, many of them, they get like, locked up they get their lives also destroyed. Destroyed. No second chances. No. Now, do you think that black kids and minorities are targeted? Absolutely. The system is structured. Listen, you know, after slavery was abolished, um, basically the criminal justice system is another form of slavery. Okay, so when you talk about mass incarceration, and getting people locked up. These young men are losing their freedom and losing their right. Once they leave, it's difficult for them to find jobs, it's difficult for them to vote, it's difficult for them to get into schools, and this is by design. And it is a snowball effect that affects them the rest of their lives. And sometimes, a lot of them, they give into the situation and just end up becoming full-blown criminals. Now, now Booker, Booker, you guys know my accent, so <laughs> let's talk about second chances for a second. Do you believe in second chances? Yes, I do. What about third chances? Um, yes, I do. Fourth? <laughs> I, I, I just think that under the right circumstances, people should be allowed to try to change their life and do better. Well, the reason I'm asking is because when you talk about that revolving door, that means every time you go through that door and come back out to be a productive person, you have to get another chance. Absolutely. Okay. So, do you think that uh, majorities, talk about Caucasians versus Latinos and Blacks, mm -hmm. do you think we, we get the same chances? No. no. Uh, because what, what, what ends up happening in a lot of instances from my experience working in the setting is that I've seen that a lot of the white kids and Asian kids, because of maybe financial reasons, they're able to get like a paid lawyer, which provides them a better opportunity to get out of jail and get locked from being locked up. Yes. Paid lawyer? Paid lawyer? Are you telling me that uh, the justice justice system mm -hmm. has a price tag at the, about you know to it? It's not about justice. No, I mean every day there are people that are getting off of hard hard crimes because they have the money to get off. And, and unfortunately for a lot of these young black and Hispanic men that are in this setting, they don't have the money to get out of jail. I've seen kids that were locked up that had a dollar bail and couldn't get out. And they were just stuck in jail because there wasn't a dollar to get them out. And unfortunately, that's the situation that we're dealing with. It's about money. It's about financial opportunity. And unfortunately, a lot of the black and Latino men aren't privy to those opportunities because they don't have the financial support from their families, and it just is something where they end up being locked up and safe. They constantly get remanded, and they can never go home. So, hashtag ju justice has a price tag, it's in place. Without a doubt. It's all about green. It's all about green. No doubt. Not about justice. No, it's not. It's about money. Now, do you think, uh, Brooker, that the prosecutors around our nation 
have an interest, talk about in general terms, I'm not saying that everyone is the same. They have an interest in justice, or they have an interest in convictions? That's a good question. Um, from my own personal experience of speaking to certain prosecutors, I've seen that in the beginning, depending on what side they were on, they were interested in definitely convictions. And then after a while, um, they've seen how the uh, system is leaning towards one side, and a lot of these young people aren't given the proper treatment and opportunity like most. It's not a fair thing, like life isn't fair, but at the end of the day, financial, you know, a cushion financially will allow you to not stay locked up for too long. Now, Brooklyn, the majority of the population in the United States are whites, right. Caucasians, majority. When we talk about things like welfare, why the majority of welfare recipients, I'm going to show you the connection program, are whites, and the response is, well, because the majority of the American people are whites. Mm -hmm. Well, if they are whites, mm -hmm. the majority, how come the majority of the jail population are not whites, are blacks? That's deep. Hey, listen, um, a lot of it comes down to the decisions that these kids are making in regards to not getting second chances by prosecutors, by the criminal justice system, and there's situations where, like, you know, you can see someone that can do something not too serious as far as, like, heinous, and they'll, get, they'll, they'll be thrown the book because of the color of their skin. And then someone who might not be black or Hispanic will get let off or get leniency because of the fact that they are white. And, and they could be doing something very bad. And unfortunately, that's the structure model that we have in this country, and it's really not fair. And my feeling is that the best way to change some of that is to educate young people on the criminal justice system, almost like a, it's a scared straight course for young people in school to speak to them about what's really going on in jail. And then they can make that choice themselves. Because sometimes a lot of peer pressure, you know, these kids hang out. You know, I, I have a son, he knows people, he knows kids who smoke. He, he has friends who um, walk around with knives in, in, their, in their backpack. You know, that's not something that I'm teaching him but he's being exposed to. And if I'm not in his ear constantly telling him what's wrong about that, you know, unfortunately a lot of these kids don't have the parental support to get the proper information to avoid situations like that. Well, Brooke, about maybe three weeks ago, mm -hmm. there was a fatal shooting in Yonkers. Mm -hmm. The old man, 17 years old, KK, was shot I heard about that. and killed. I heard about that. Shot and killed by another 16 year old. Younger than him. Right. We had uh, an opportunity to interview the mother, Tawanda Castle, and we asked her, Did uh, your son knew the kid who, uh, who shot him? Did you know him? She said, No. Do you think that part of the problem, I'm not saying that's the problem, I'm just talking about part of the problem, is that parents don't get involved with their kids, friends. They don't know who they are. Right. Okay. You think that's part of the issue? It, it, it has a little bit to do with that. And, and I think that as a parent, it's important for you to find extracurricular activities to get your child involved in, whether it's sports, whether it's music, whether it's art, whether it's architecture, whether it's production of music or entertainment as far as like acting. You have to find something that your child gravitates to. It could be rap music. It could be wanting to be a basketball player. But that occupies most of their time. And I know from my own experience, you know, um, when my son was in high school, he was wrestling. And he was concerned with his weight. He was concerned with his eating regimen. And then once he stopped, you know, um, wrestling and his wrestling career was over and he didn't have a job at the time, he started to hang out with the wrong group. And I had to check him because, you know, his pattern of coming home at a certain time and being responsible just kind of fell off. His grades started to fall, and you need to be involved with your children to know what they're doing, to avoid losing them. And unfortunately, we're losing our children. A lot of it comes down to a lack of fathering in the black community. That's, that's without a doubt what's going on, because, you know, um, we see these young men on these corners, and instead of, like, walking to them and talking to them, we have become afraid of them. 
and we avoid them. Sometimes rightfully so. Rightfully so, but then at the same time, that's still that same kid that you used to watch play in the playground. That's still him, okay? And you gotta remember, okay, he's being led in the wrong way. And if you find the opportunity to speak to him, step to him as men, okay? There's, there's, unfortunately, a lot of these men are being raised by single women, and they're working or they're not working. But at the end of the day, these kids are being left alone to do whatever they want to do. And they're being grouped and put together with these different groups of kids. And sometimes they get involved with gangs. And sometimes, you know, they're doing, you know, um, petty crimes as far as like robbing people and, and stealing cell phones. And this is something that's going on in our community. And we need to find a way to step in and speak to these young people and hopefully just try to save our community, save them. So just before we go any further, because we still have a few things to talk about, let's mention this book again. Yes. How long did it take you to write the book? The book, uh, Locked Up and Put Away, um, it actually took me six Power months. Powerful title, Locked Up and Put Away. Thank you. Yeah. So about six months, you say? It took me six months to write. And uh, I'm sure that a lot of people will want to take a look at this book. Absolutely. Okay. Where would I be able to get the, the book is available on Amazon. You can you can find the book. Uh, you, can put, you can find the book on Amazon, Locked Up and Put Away by Booker G's. Um, it's also available on BarnesandNoble.com. You can find it there. And I also sell it on my media outlets, which is on Instagram and which is also on Facebook as Booker G's. On Instagram, I'm available under the title Group of Justice, which is a nonprofit organization I'm developing. Now, do you have a social platform where people can follow you? Absolutely. Take, so what is it? Absolutely. Let's, let's On mention. Facebook, I'm available under Booker G's. You know, you can friend me up there. Um, I'm also Booker G's on Twitter. And on Instagram, I'm available under Luca Justice. And you can, um, you know, Tell me what your issues are and what's going on because also what I do is once a month on Facebook is I conduct a um, podcast um, which is through um, Straight No Chaser, the talk show, once a month I mentor a young person. Good. We're going to get there too. Okay. Now, just prior to us mentioning the book, yes. we were talking about uh, kids and prevention, what can we do? And you mentioned uh, activities. Right. Uh, do these, do that, get involved, get involved in positive stuff. Absolutely. We're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, one of the issues, if I'm getting, you know, if I'm correct, mm -hmm. is a lot of these kids getting involved with the wrong crew, the wrong crowd, the wrong friends. It's because of the lack of options. They don't have things to do. Absolutely. In Yonkers, we have a couple of good programs. Mm -hmm. PAL, where kids can go there and play basketball. Mm -hmm. They can associate with other kids that care about sports. Right. So you know that they're not out there drinking, they're not out there smoking, because right. they're into sports. Right. And when we talk about sports, we talk about music, writing, uh, uh, acting, any kind of a positive, any kind of a positive activity. So guys, parents out there, don't wait to become, for your son to become a statistic, or you to become a statistic, Absolutely. because when a kid gets killed, the suffering or the pain is not just for the for the person mm -hmm. who got killed. You know, it's for the entire family. Absolutely. It has an impact on everyone. Absolutely. The parents, the friends, mm -hmm. it's a whole you know chain reaction. Right. It's a village. It's a village. So guys, options. Consider the options. Get your kids involved in positive stuff. Because mm -hmm. uh, Brooker said, it comes down to option, get involved in the right thing. That's right. Now, Brooker, let's say I have a son that uh, already got involved in the wrong thing. That chance for me to put him in, on the good options, mm -hmm. it's gone. Mm -hmm. How do I do with that? You know, um, the important thing is to definitely reach out to any community service that is provided in your neighborhood as far as like maybe a mentoring program. Um, they're also, believe it or not, I have a son that's in the Boy Scouts. He's 14, you know, he just wants to sit at home, play his video games, play Fortnite on his phone, and we had to find a way to get him involved. He doesn't want to do anything else. You know, he's not athletic, you know, so we had to get him involved in some other things. And at the same time, you know, the city provides different activities that you may want to you know, take advantage of, whether it's the museum, whether it's like um, 
you know, art programs that are in New York City, uh, maybe taking your child out to a game, you know, maybe to a Nick game or something if they're interested in seeing it. Um, but going back to what you were saying about, you know, the programs, I mean, we grew up, I remember when the community center was always open all night. You know, you can go in there in, my, in the elementary school and play, play basketball and stuff. You know, all that stuff is gone because I guess the city has cut off services. Budget cuts and budget cuts. And budget cuts. Stuff. Absolutely. And, 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 it, and it affects our neighborhood and our communities because it's the only outlet that these children have. But like you said in the beginning, everything comes down to money. Always. All these programs that are cut comes down to money. Okay. But you see, you just said about, uh, you spoke about your son and uh, very into the games, mm -hmm. and you had to find other options. Absolutely. But the reason why you found other options, and the reason why perhaps you got your son involved in other options is, if, is because you had discipline to do that. Now, how can a parent, a mother, or a father instill discipline on a son if that parent doesn't have discipline himself? It's very true. Um, I mean, growing up for me, I mean, I wasn't the most disciplined person myself. You know, I mean, I, you know, played sports growing up. You know, I went to college. Um, I have a bachelor's degree of science in, in fashion merchandise, and that was a choice that I chose. That was a field that I chose because my grandmother was a sewing teacher, so I gravitated to making clothes and sewing. That was my thing growing up. Um, but it wasn't until I became a parent that the light flickered on for me, and I realized, you know, I didn't want to say or do anything that I wouldn't want or to say my son to do um, in a bad way. So I had to be a positive role model for him. And I know all parents, all people don't live by this code. But for me, and not having a father, I had an opportunity to create the father that I would have wanted to have, which is me. So uh, you became the change you wanted to see. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, I, I was blessed with a wonderful mother who happened to be a college professor. And the only thing she was concerned about me and my brother doing was graduating college. And then whatever we decided to do, she was cool with, you know, and we've been getting un un unbelievable support from her. And I just think that whatever it is that your child's into, you have to find a way to embrace it and support it and not downgrade it or, or, or be negative about it. You know, um, if your child wants to draw, you, you, he wants to do graffiti, you find ways to encourage that. You know, if your child wants to play basketball, you put them into a youth program. They're all over the city, you know. So, Brooker. Before, as a parent, yes, I think the most horrible thing for a parent is to bear a 14, 15, 16. I, I, I couldn't begin to imagine how that feels. I can't believe to imagine. Right. You know, we go there, we go, we give our condolences. Mm -hmm. I feel your pain. Right. We really don't feel it. No, we can't. We can't understand. We cannot understand or, or, or even grasp right. that concept right. of such a loss. Right. So. We need to do something to prevent us from doing something. Right. We need to find a way. We know that the system needs an overall. It needs to be fixed big time. Yes. Okay. People like you are exposing and talking about the, the failure. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so. Tell us what you've been doing, because I heard from other people, not just from you, that you are going around talking in schools, right. talking about the young people, you are a mentor, but we want more people like you. Okay. We need to be contagious right. of the things that you do, right. because you might be able to help to talk to five people, mm -hmm. but if it's two of us, right. we talk to ten. Right. If we get another person, mm -hmm. it's fifteen. How can we get involved? Um, the important thing is if you go onto my Facebook page, you'll see all the uh, activity that I'm doing in regards to reaching out to the community. Um, if you have a community organization or you are working at a school and you need someone to speak to the young people there, I'm available for that. Um, this system is failing all of our children and has been doing that ever since its inception in regards to the criminal justice system in New York City. Other cities have changed. They have totally just, you know, gotten rid of the juvenile justice system in New Jersey, in California. They're reforming the system, meaning that they're, they're finding alternative methods to educating these children. Because once you lock them up, 
you know, what, what, what I've experienced from, from writing this book is I technically ended up becoming just as institutionalized as the children that I was watching. The locking of the doors, you know, the closing and locking in at night, you know, having to call and be told what to do and where to go all the time. I felt the level of enslavement myself. I felt the level of, you know, being criminalized myself, being locked up. And then the just behavior of that atmosphere just allowed all types of negative, toxic culture that existed within the system. And by writing the book, I've exposed, I've spoken about how toxic this situation is and the system is to our children. And it's important that we educate them on what is wrong with this system to keep them, it's, it's this prevention, and to keep them from being locked up and put in this situation. So in closing, uh, Brooker, tell us, what are you doing lately? What I'm doing is, um, for one, I do a monthly podcast um, on Straight No Chaser, the talk show. Um, it's available on my, on my Facebook page, uh, once a month, I don't really have a date, you know, I did one for February, but you can see a show that was viewed. Um, and we're available on YouTube as well. Um, I'm also speaking at... Before you go, what's the channel on YouTube? Oh, the channel on, the channel on YouTube is Straight No Chasing the Talk Show. That's yeah. the channel. Sorry about that. Um, I will be talking next month at um, John F. Kennedy High School, it happens to be my old high school, to speak to a group of young men. You know that that go there, and I'm available all the time to speak to young men at any time, anywhere. Just hit me up on Facebook, hit me up on Instagram. I'm available. Um, let me know, and this is what I do. I speak to young people about the the, the 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 misconceptions and the false gratification of jail, and that that's one thing that's happening. A lot of our young men believe that jail is like a badge of honor. It's cool. It's something yeah. to do, and we need to let them know that that's not what's going on. It's, 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 it's a business, it's a system, and you're kind of like, you know, giving your freedom away, being a part of it. Okay, guys, in closing, yes. I'm going to close this now. Yes, sir. But I want you, yes. at this point, tell us what this book is about. It's about the system, yes. it's about options, yes. it's about suggestions to the parents to avoid those kids from being locked up and put away. Absolutely. What's the book about? This book is about what goes on in the juvenile justice system at a hardcore inside look level of what is entailed being locked up as a young person. You buy this book for your child, your young 15, 16 year old, I promise you they will want no part of this because it's an inside look at the toxic atmosphere and culture that exists within the juvenile justice system here in New York City. And I'm sure it's a reflection of what's actually going on around this country. So it's definitely something that's a well good investment. You'll enjoy it. It's set up almost like, you know, you feel like you're walking with me as you read the book. It's a great inside look at how bad the system is structured. One more time, where can I get it? You can get it on Amazon, locked up and put away Lock, well, Locked Up and Put Away by Booker G's, um, also on barnesandnoble.com, and if you go on my Facebook page, you can also purchase the book there. Thank you. The last word that you're gonna have is, anything that I forgot to ask you that you want to bring it up? Um, you know, writing this book just comes from a father's perspective on what is missing in a young man's life, and I felt like being in this environment, um, I felt like I never belonged there, but then I just also knew that God put me there to be in this position to speak about what's going on. So I'm kind of like someone who is really bringing to light the darkness that exists in this environment. So please, when you get a chance, purchase this book. It's $14.99. Thank you. $14.99. Nothing. But my savior gives life. Absolutely. Small price tag. Absolutely. For the for the results of it. Absolutely. So guys, this will end our interview. We want to end up this you know this interview with saying you know, saying thank you to a to a dolphin restaurant, one Van Dark Street in Yonkers. Come on down here. Great place, great food, great drinks, great place to be in the summertime outside. That's right. So come and check it out. You gotta come and have a beer with me here. Right. Or a soda or whatever. It is cool. My man. Thank you. Pleasure. Stay tuned for more.